looking to make some healthier habits this holiday season, make sure to check out our Moving Through Midlife community over on Facebook as we are doing a Planksgiving event where we are doing daily plank workouts. We will be doing an advent for healthy, happy hips this holiday season, and then also have a sugar challenge, a two-week sugar challenge that you might be interested in. Happy holidays! Welcome to Raising Healthy Humans, a podcast created for busy moms, where you can easily find info on health and wellness for your family. Join Courtney, a health coach, movement and posture specialist, and founder of FormFit, an active and supportive community where she helps busy moms move more. Here on Raising Healthy Humans podcast, she shares personal life experiences, training, knowledge, and conversations with other health and wellness experts so you can raise healthy humans. Today, I speak with T of Green Living Gurus, and she is here to help us understand why we need to work to clean the environment in our home of toxins and a few things that can help us do that. I feel like she provided us some simple, actionable steps that we can do right now while even listening to the podcast. So I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hi, T. How are you today? Good, Courtney. How are you? I'm good. Nice to meet you. So as, can you... As here too. Yep. Yeah. Can you um, let us know what is it you do and what is Green Living Gurus? So I have to go back a little bit just to explain what I do okay. and what it is because I uh, grew up in Buffalo, New York, which is where I live today where I'm sitting today. And I grew up, I was very fortunate. I grew up in the 60s and the 70s. I'm 60 years old now, but I, my, our mom, I have three older sisters and younger brother. Our mother was extremely into health and wellness and keeping toxic chemicals out of our home. Okay. And we'd clean with vinegar and baking soda when we had, to, you know, we had chores every Saturday. And we were fed really uh, organic food. She shopped at a little tiny co-op that was here in Buffalo. No idea how ahead of her time she was. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think she knew she was ahead of her time. But this is when Burger Kings and McDonald's and pizza and fast food was popping up. Well, we didn't have any of that. We came home to apples and hummus and stuffed grape leaves. She was Italian and Lebanese. And really healthy eating. Everything was home cooked. And we were not being fed. She was keeping us away from all that. Now, my dad was Irish, so he would have rather, you know, gone out for the junk food. But he ended up uh, becoming as healthy as she was, too. It was interesting. But that's how that's all we knew. And I started figuring out, like, we were a little different than all these other families and the food they were eating. And we had always had organic everything. So when I went to college in 19, in the um, early eighties, I went to Ithaca college in central New York state for, I had a business major and a minor in health. I wanted to open up a large supermarket. I wanted everybody to see how great all this produce, all these products, how to live a healthier life. And you know, that supermarket market as whole foods, I okay. never went with my business plan of my supermarket uh, because I was also a party planner and I was planning parties in high school and uh, college. And when I came out of college, it was a huge industry. I got hired. Fast forward, I've had an event planning, party planning business for 37 years. Oh my goodness. And I have a long time, over 700 events. But through those 37 years and plus, I have never lost my love of health, wellness, and especially getting toxic chemicals out of your home. And especially over the past 10 to 20 years, when I feel like cancer is on the rise, chemicals are on the rise, products that have all these chemicals in them are on the rise. Our homes are polluted with them. And I had a lot of people come to me over the past three plus decades and helping them uh, realize where these could be invading into their private space and 
come, uh, some cancer patients would come to me and say, can you, you know, can you come over and help? And I just did it on the side, not be paid or anything. I just, the, for the love of it. And then social media, once social media really became part of our lives, it got me a little bit more into the forefront of people's lives. And then when 2020 came and actually prior to the pandemic, didn't even know, I just knew what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. Okay. So I started Green Living Gurus. And from there, I got, I had a podcast as well. I uh, created a product line out of my love of just having, you don't need 30 things to clean your home with. So I have one all purpose cleaner that I started and used and people love it. So I ended up selling it. <laughs> I mean, it's very small. I'm still very small. I've only been doing this officially for uh, two, three years. Oh, wow. But really, okay. really, I've been doing it for almost my whole life. Right. And a natural entrepreneur. Uh, like yes. Was, yes. Yes. <laughs> started I in definitely. high school, you said. So, yes, I started actually my sophomore year in high school when I had a fruit and nut stand on the streets of downtown Buffalo with all the hot dog stands. <laughs> and uh, I found out fast people wanted healthy food. And oh, they did. Mm -hmm. Felt like 19. they did. I sold out every day of all my fruit and fresh fruit cups and all my nuts at, um, uh, you know, till by twelve thirty in the afternoon. It was interesting, and it was teas, fruit, and nut stand. So yes, I started out early. Oh wow, it was quite funny. Yeah, it gave me time to go to the beach for the afternoon. <laughs> okay, so with um. Green Living Gurus, you mentioned the amount of toxins that could be in your home. Mm. Can you, because I feel like a lot of us, you know, we think that when we come into our home, um, that it's kind of this safe, clean area um, that no environmental toxins are entering or are in our home. Can you talk to us about like some of the things that may be in our home, even for those of us who try to use those organic, more natural ingredients with our cleaning? Yes, absolutely. And interesting enough, the, and this is reported by the FDA and also the CDC, I believe it is, that our homes are potentially two to 100 times more toxic than the outdoor air. Ugh. And uh, average, they say two to 10 times, but it depends on where you live, you know, living near a throughway or a exhaust, you know, how much your exhaust there is. But our indoor air can potentially be making us sick by how many toxins are in your house. You're breathing in every day. And your windows are airtight and the air in your house is not circulating enough and you are spraying different chemicals to clean with and your laundry detergent is polluting your house, let alone polluting your sheets and your bed and you're sleeping in your clothes. And the list goes on and it's only gotten worse over the past, as I mentioned, 10 to 15 years with the amount of chemicals that have been released and the 80,000 different chemicals that are out there. So, and, and the sad thing is people don't know it. You don't even, you think that your home is your safe haven. It's clean. You, you have it cleaned or you clean it and you think you're getting rid of germs, but unfortunately some of those cleaning supplies specifically that you're using are actually polluting the air that you're breathing. Yeah. With a laundry detergent, you mentioned the laundry detergent. I am amazed at the smell that mm -hmm. some of them have. And I've gotten products from people or, you know, clothing from people like as hand-me-downs or whatever. And they, you can mm -hmm. smell it immediately when it comes into your home. And I, it didn't matter how many times I would wash those same yep. pieces of clothing and it doesn't come off. So Can't you get have it to out. wonder. Yeah. I've thrown away clothes um, before because if somebody borrows something, most people know never to wash anything I give you because <laughs> I don't trust them. And right. it comes back and I can't, I mean, I put it in the garage and I'm like, I can't even bring that smell into my house because it's outgassing. Mm -hmm. uh, 
it, it, it gets into the fibers, those chemicals just attach to the fibers of those of the clothing. And the sad thing about that is that people think that that's a fresh smell. Mm -hmm. And they were brought up that way, or that's how their parents, you know, clean their clothes when they were kids. And it was what they thought was fresh smell mm -hmm. or lavender smell or lemon. And they associate that smell, which is so powerful to happiness and growing up and clothes and, you know, things that you can relate to. And unfortunately, those are toxic smells. They're there is nothing uh, safe or healthy about those smells or clean for that matter. I consider that extremely dirty. Um, it's it's uh, unfortunate because the companies have marketed it that way mm -hmm. and made you believe that everything they're putting in their product is going to make your laundry smell fresh yeah. or ocean breeze, right? Oh my God, ocean breeze. What? Anyway, um, so yes, and it's extremely difficult to get it out of the fibers of your clothes. I mean, it's there's there's a process that I've seen people use, but it's quite the process. So what do you recommend? Do you have like a laundry detergent or just is it all purpose cleaner? I know you have that. Mm -hmm. Do you have some sort of detergent or what do you use for that type of for product. cleaning my clothes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're lucky because now there are lots of options. And I know a lot of people shop on Amazon. A lot of them are available on Amazon. And some are even, in, you know, um, you can buy in certain stores. Right. I use something, a, a detergent called Molly Suds. Oh, okay. Molly Suds. Molly Suds is great. They've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. The owner of the company uh, started it because of her daughter uh, ended up having some severe issues with, I believe it what was from the laundry soap. And okay. I think, I can't remember the whole story, but there's a whole story behind it. Anyway, okay. she started it. It's great. I love it. Okay. Um, there's a few other ones. Meloria I'll use too. Um, that's out there. That's not as accessible as Molly Sauce, but it's on it's on Amazon. I have it, I have all these on my website too. And mm -hmm. if you're going to at least you I mean, if you're not ready to make that step to those two, uh seventh generation is accessible everywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't like the fragrance in anything, uh, because if it's essential oils, it really needs to be in a glass jar, not a plastic container so okay. sometimes they have to add chemicals in there to kind of get that scent into because they know that people want scent in their uh, no sense you don't need sense that fragrance free is the cleanest you can be okay so with your products are all of them fragrance free mine are essential oils uh my okay, and yours i I'll, Yep. I only have an all-purpose cleaner. I use seven essential oils that have cleaning properties. Known, They're known to be uh, antibacterial, uh, antifungal, antivirus um, that I use in my seven uh, essential oils. So okay. that's all I have. That, I have a refill container, and then I have three room sprays. Those are my only products. So I don't have cleaning supplies or any or, or clean or laundry detergent yet okay but um that's basically all i clean with i clean the toilet with it i clean the counters i clean um anything that is needed to be cleaned <laughs> okay i must have seen the room sprays because i went on your main page the yes shop page yes. and i saw yes. that there were a few things there three room um, sprays yes okay okay and those are with essential oils they are okay in glass jars. <laughs> yes, yes. And then the all-purpose cleaner you can use for everything, like even yes. floors and windows and Yeah, yep, I do. I um I I also use Dr. Bronner's. I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Bronner's. Mm -hmm. It's a great mm -hmm. soap line. Mm -hmm. Uh that's what I'll clean my floors with. Okay. Water and soap. You don't need much more than that. Okay. And to, to get the dust and dirt up. You don't okay. have to be using all these chemicals 
that remain on your floor. I mean, it's going down that laundry or the cleaning aisle of any supermarket, that smell, those smells, those are all outgassing of chemicals. Yes. That's that's what's happening in your home too. Mm. Do you have recommendations for things that we can do? So, I mean, I know even like our couches and our beds mm. and everything that we bring into the home are creating this yeah. off gassing or out gassing. So is there anything we can put in our home to help with this? Yes. And that's a, yes, there are. And there's some okay. simple things and then there's okay. some more complex things. Okay. Uh, and then there's some expensive things. <laughs> so first of all, being aware of anything you're bringing in your home first, that's if you can do that and you look at labels and mm-hmm. you start reading those ingredients and knowing what you're bringing in, even if it's from paint to furniture, you mentioned, if you're bringing in furniture that's been sprayed with uh, chemicals to re- um fire retardants, which hopefully they're not doing that anymore because there's been some laws passed, but some still are. And, but you just have to be cautious of everything you're bringing in your home. Rugs, you know, that new rug smell, that glue that goes down, all of that is outgassing into your home. And so many homes are made with windows that are tight and no air can get in. You want air. You want air circulating throughout your home as much as you possibly can, depending on where you live, open up your windows. As I mean, I'm here in Buffalo, New York. We open ours even in winter just to get some fresh air flowing throughout the house. So that opening windows is key. Uh, making sure that you're taking shoes off at the door. Shoes can bring in a lot of chemicals. Too many people are still spraying their lawns out there with pesticides and herbicides, those can float all over the place. They can get in your house. They can get on your floor. Your kids can be licking them. Your dogs can be licking them. You know, anything that is outside can be coming in. So taking your shoes off, that's just an easy one. Plants Mm -hmm. are a great way to also help clean the air in your home. And I know we're on a a podcast, but behind me, I have- about a hundred. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks to my father. He gave us, he gave us the green thumb in our family. So uh, plants are great and, and very, eat, people are like, oh, I kill plants. There are plants you can't kill. It, can you, you name can, them? Because I'm terrible with plants. Yes. Yes. And you know, if you look at mine, like what are the easiest plants to take care of and to clean the air in our home? You'll find, you'll find on their uh, peace lilies, you know, you can't, you just don't water peace lily until the leaves are looking like they're going to fall. You know, they're, they're wilted. They're easy. They're great. Okay. They flower. They're a simple plant to take. Spider plants are another one. They love cleaning the air. Um, the other ones are, I always call it the grandfather plant. And it's not called the grandfather plant. Um, they have the spikes that go up. I can't think of the name, but there, there are others many others out there that are not hard to take care of. Those ones, the the grandfather plant, I don't know why they're called grandfather plants. I'm looking at three of them right here. Uh, You have to water them very little. Like I had, I always had my parents, I always had those in our college uh, rooms and dorms because they knew we couldn't kill them and they knew it was cleaning the air. So those are just- Is that what's right behind you? uh, This is a, this is a money plant. The one hanging- this is a money plant. And then okay, I have, that's, a, okay. I have a, a ficus over there. Okay. There's some trees, I, plants I don't even know. Fern, I see I have my loft. I have um, hydrangeas back there. Okay. Yeah. that's that. I, I'm lucky because we have a great sunroom. And a, though that whole room is like, it's like a forest back there because until mid-May, we, you know, we take a lot of things outdoors. But um, I... I I counted our plants the other day and we have uh, over 150 in the house. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know. I mean, we have little ones. I count all the little babies and, you know, I just learned, started learning how to really make an orchid re, uh, re-bloom. I was so excited You'll about have it. to tell me about that after. I didn't even know what I did. I just put in a window with sun and it just came back. I'm like, wow. And then I looked on mine. I'm like, cause I hate, I don't like, I love orchids. They're beautiful. Anyways. So plants, another big thing is, you're, you, um, if you have ceiling fans, 
clean your ceiling fans constantly. They collect dust up there and you turn that ceiling fan on. Now, in addition to that, if you have uh, in wind window air conditioners, uh-huh. they all have they all have filters. Open them up just on the front, open it, and there's a little filter in there that you want to clean that regularly. I mean, you're in Florida, so you've got to be cleaning your filters quite regularly, just mm-hmm. especially in the summertime. If you have forced air, which I'm sure most people in Florida have air conditioning, you want clean filters for your uh, forced air. Um, air conditioning unit. So Mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you are getting the cleanest air in your home when it comes into your home. So those are great things. Now, once the, once the air is in your home and once you are um, uh, breathing in the air, two things that I have that I love. Okay. One is an indoor air quality monitor. It will tell you what uh, if you have any alerts about toxic air in your home, like I just got one, I turned on the gas stove. It picks up the gas stove in our kitchen and I got an alert, open a window. You have a sign of high chemicals in your kitchen. I have an air and I also have an air purifier in the kitchen too, but those are, I love my indoor air quality monitor. And I've taken it to people's homes just to show them what they are breathing in their home and how they can get rid of the the toxic air that they're breathing in. Now, two of the major things, and we've talked about this already briefly, is your cleaning supplies and your laundry detergent because your laundry detergent lasts. Those chemicals last in your clothes. They last in your sheets. They are also uh, coming out into your vents into Mm. the rooms you're breathing those chemicals in if there's any fragrance at all you potentially are breathing those in and they potentially have a lot of chemicals in them that could cause uh not only cancers but so many other illnesses and those those are known facts but they don't tell you that and they don't have to tell you that especially with the word fragrance that's Mm. that if there's one thing anybody from listening here today that can get out of this is the one word you want to avoid in any product, whether it's cleaning supplies, laundry detergent, shampoo, deodorant, anything you use with the word fragrance on it, that clear indication it has a lot of chemicals in it because they do not have to tell you what makes up the fragrance in any product on the market today. Mm. That is a known um, fact too that it's a law. It's a rule, law, law from the '40s. Chanel Number no. Five went to the government and said, "We want to protect our trade secret," and it's a trade secret. And recently, in the past years, uh, they've been finding benzene in sunscreen. I don't know if you saw that last year or the year. I think it was last year. Benzene in sunscreen. Benzene causes cancer. There's not potentially causes cancer. It is known to cause cancer. It's a, it's a harsh chemical and they were finding it in sunscreen. Well, benzene is one ingredient that has been known to be in fragrance. So, I mean, that's just one ingredient. And I mean, there's hundreds of chemicals that can make up fragrance. And it's a shame that people don't know this because if those, if those chemicals were listed on the products you're putting on your skin, you're spraying in your home, you're using to put in your uh, clothing. If you saw those ingredients and you knew what those were, you would never buy that product ever. And they know that. Mm -hmm. And they know that they can put that in there with the word fragrance and they don't have to disclose it to you. So that is uh, the F word in the wellness and health industry is known as the other F word. (laughs) avoid it <laughs> so okay i probably went so, off on a super long tangent and I no no you, that's did great I answer your question yes <laughs> what yes. are the simple things you could do yes and avoid the word fragrance perfect okay so avoiding fragrance yeah bring plants into the home you mentioned mm-hmm. purifier air purifiers oh, yeah. what is there a recommendation for Types of air purifiers, anything I, you know, I've read about like, what are they that I don't even know ozone type. So here's my, there's because of no, 
ever since COVID and everybody wanted clean, you know, everybody's got clean, 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 clean. The air purifying industry blew up while well, before COVID and, and we actually in Buffalo, we have probably the best, in my personal opinion, air purifier in the world. Oh, it's made here. Every part is made here. There's no bells and whistles. There's none of these things that they sell you on. That's not okay. what you need. Biggest thing okay. you want to look at is what is the filter? If you took Austin Air's filter and you compared it to all these other air doctors and that have all the bells and whistles and oh, they'll do this, they'll do, you don't care. You just want to know what is that filter made of? If you saw the filter and it weighs about, I don't even know, I think it weighs five to 10 pounds. It's, it's solid. It is, it is the best filter that you can use to filter your, for, for your um, indoor air. And it, uh, again, is 100% made in the USA, which I'm very keen on that the plastics in these other air purifiers are coming from pretty much overseas somewhere. Um, so that alone, but it has three, it has a one, two, three level and it cleans your air. And I've done indoor air quality tests for people in their homes that have bad air quality. We put in the, the Austin air into their home and then we test it again and everything goes down. I of course also help them get rid of products they shouldn't be using, but it is, uh, it is my favorite, um, a, a piece of equipment in our home that is we have one in our bedroom and the filter lasts should last between four and five years depending on how much you use it oh wow okay yep and uh well, ours is in the bedroom which is where we sleep we spend what a third of our time in there and once we my husband was a pretty bad snorer snorer is that a word <laughs> He, uh, he would wake me up all night. And ever since that air purifier went into our bedroom, uh, there's, there's very little snoring and really it, it collects all the dust and anything floating around you, you have, you're clean, you're breathing in the cleanest air possible. Yeah. So, and I'm what is proponent. that called? Austin air purifier. I know on, uh, you you can order directly through Austin Air, but if you go through Green Living Gurus, we give a ten percent ten percent discount on all the products. So oh okay perfect. And then yep. is this is this like a big? Because I've seen the Air Doctors. Are they are they about the same size? Are they bigger? Where they're standing about the same size? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it's, then yeah. Do you recommend? So do you just have one? And then your plants, or do you have a couple throughout the house? I have two air purifiers. You do? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. I have two uh, plants, um, windows, fans. Another thing, your dry cleaning is typically loaded with some chemicals. When you bring that in, or especially in your your car, and if you're picking it up yourself, open the windows because you want your, your dry cleaning to air out all those untie that bag outside if you can leave it outside if you can for a little bit so that's do you know another... how long like for the off gassing or the out gassing do you know how long the i don't courtney i not sure i just know like when i buy new sneakers you know you open that up and you're like oh yeah. i put them outside for a couple days okay um anything that i can smell like that i mean you just can't get away from chemicals you can't it's right. impossible right and but it's possible for you to avoid as many coming into your home so those smells anything like that you know people shower curtains oh my gosh i can't oh, even, they're the worst yeah worse and they you know that smell anything plasticky like that, you know, mm -hmm. try, I try not to buy any plastic at all. Okay. Uh, it's, it, you know, whatever we do, I, I, you know, even, even if it's a takeout food, I immediately am getting it out of that container and putting it in my glass storage containers. Um, I know it's, it's, it's hard to get away from it, but once you're conscious of it and knowing that 
you you don't want um, those plastics to be outgassing into your home. You'll start realizing, you know, bit piece by piece, like, oh yeah, I, I don't need this, or you know, it's it's interesting. I've seen people transform from uh, living with a lot of toxic chemicals into one step at a time, mm -hmm. start looking at something. You don't have to do it all at once, but once your, your eyes start opening to all of these products out there and the multi gazillion dollars that these companies are making off of these chemicals and these, you know, products are putting on the shelf with terrible ingredients in them that, are convincing you to buy them and they're starting to use greenwashing terminology and mm -hmm. making you think that aloe in shampoo makes the shampoo healthy because it's good for your scalp. And, you, know, you just, you have to look at the back. You have to investigate it a little bit further and really read the back label, not the front yeah. label. Yeah. Well, and I think just taking the time, like you said, and do it one thing mm -hmm. at a time because yeah. we, and it's just like with nutrition, when you're working with someone on nutrition or fitness, it's everybody wants to think like, Oh, now I've got to go in and do everything. No, just do one thing. And yes. like with laundry, they now offer laundry sheets, which mm -hmm. is great. I mean, there's still fragrance, ah, but, um, I'll have to look at some of, some of them are okay. I'm not essential oil fragrance. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not a hundred percent sold on the fragrance sheets yet. I haven't done enough research on them because I often think, how do they get this cleaning, clean, cleaning soap, let's just say into a sheet. I yeah. question that there's some, I don't know the process. It's, it's semi new out there. Um, so I'm not a hundred percent sure on it. Okay. Um, you know, I know they, they sell you on it. You know, you're not using a big plastic jar and saving the environment because these plastic jars, yes, that's helpful to mother earth, but really what are you washing your clothes? And so I can't say one way or another now okay. dryer sheets, probably the worst thing you could possibly use in your laundry. Yeah. And Absolutely do you horrible. use the wool balls? I do, but you know what? I we don't have a need so much for them. Okay. I don't have static cling. Uh, there's been some uh, reports that the chemicals are what cause the static cling, and we mm. typic I typically don't. I never get that staticky, you know, feeling of like a sock stuck to something coming out of the laundry. Uh, I will say most of our clothing is. Uh, cotton, which could okay, be a that, yeah. potential. Yeah. Uh, we don't wear much polyester, which is uh, derived from petrochemicals. Um, there's that we could go down that whole, you know, clothing is a whole nother story and what they put in clothing. And that's, you know, for women, especially, especially women listening here too, you really want to think about also right now, there's a big push to get chemicals out of uh, yoga pants mm -hmm. and Patagonia and Lululemon, they're all working on this because they've been putting these waterproof chemicals in yoga pants and everything we wear. I was mortified to read it, uh, knowing the chemical that they're putting in there. It's a P it's in the family of PFAS chemicals, which are just atrocious, but hopefully they're changing that. And, mm -hmm. but it's just something to, you know, we have to really be aware. And yeah. take it upon ourselves to look at everything uh, we put on our skin, around us, in our home, what we eat, everything. It's it's a matter of just looking at everything because there's they're everywhere. It is. Water we could talk about for about three hours. <laughs> but Is there a site that you usually recommend people go to to find more information about, um, I know like some people say EWG. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you're starting out, Environmental Working Group was what you're referring to as EWG. Yep. They've been around for a long time. I've probably been following them since they started. And I, they are fabulous what they do. They really okay. have, uh, they're out there fighting for these laws, fighting for keeping chemicals out of products. They're not flawless. 
Um, okay. I don't agree with some of the products that they recommend because now I think there's some sponsorship dollars in there, mm. but here nor the, there, we still all have to pay attention to what we are using. I love EWG. I support them. I think they, they have helped uh, uh, so many people. They have an app you can put on your phone that you can pull up and it can tell you on a scale of one to 10, how safe it is for you. Okay. That works uh, for most people. Um, I really dive in deeper than that. Um, but that's okay. It's helpful. If people start paying attention, if you start there, I think it's great. It's a great resource uh, to get that app on your phone or start paying, you know, pay attention to some of the the blog posts that they're putting out there. Um, they do, they do do great work. So yes, they're, they're one. There's many other organizations. Uh, one uh, counter friend of mine was many of us doing similar things like what I'm doing mama vation uh mama vation she's um Leah Segetti is doing amazing work out there I, I just commend her for everything she's doing because she is uh taking an industry such as yoga pants I believe she just did something on that she has scientists they take the product they tear it apart they're looking for chemicals in there and then she comes and reports back on her mm. findings oh wow and yes it's it's and she gets she gets in a lot of heated uh debates and tr not trouble per se but these companies are they're massive companies right i'd be a little nervous to do that because and so we we as green living, healthy wellness people. We're, we're supporting her and helping her as much as we possibly can. But her work is, she does it, uh, she's with cosmetics, shampoos, deodorant, sunscreen. She has great reports on there. So I, I'd follow her, follow me, of course, too. Green living right, careers. right, right. <laughs> well, and I was going to say, she's probably shaking the industry up like Food Babe did for food. Exactly. And what yeah, so that people are probably kind of nervous because they see what happens with yep. when people do this. They really can make a change. Yep, yep. So they, yeah, Food Babe has been great. She's yeah. definitely, and it's, it's, and I've been following her price since day one too, but right. it's, I love this so much because just 10 years ago, there was just a handful of us kind of out there, you know, just doing, now it is by, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And I love seeing the younger generation. Now I interview a lot of uh, younger people that are, that had health issues, major health issues, and then have turned into uh, coaches and uh, yeah. different fields of helping people with what they had encountered of uh, basically chemicals, toxic chemicals that were affecting their health or their hormones. And so it's, it's a good thing that everybody's out there talking publicly um, and getting the word out just like you are too, Courtney, and helping people uh, with their health and wellness. Thank you. Can you tell us um, one where we can find you? I know you've already kind of mentioned it, but mm -hmm. make sure to let us know again, where can we find you? That would be the green living gurus.com and everything is listed on there whatever you would like to know about me it's on there uh and all my social media and my shop and um i also have a amazon store of products i recommend oh good uh, yep that i put up there that things i use or things that i've looked at um that are potentially you know that not are potentially that are better for you than other other products so right okay perfect and then um you have a podcast podcast and is that green living gurus it's called green, green living with tea tea that's right i was gonna say green living with tea okay. yeah i'll have Perfect. to get you on it courtney i well i'm gonna i'm gonna um, make sure that i listen to it okay um, <laughs> <laughs> and then what is one thing i think you've already kind of said a few things that you mm -hmm. like where to start but if if moms can make a change this week What's one simple thing that they can work on this week to help with raising healthier humans? So I would keep a little journal and start in the morning. What 
is your routine of every product you use. Write it down. Look at it. Look at the ingredients. You don't have to write down all the ingredients, but you're going to see some similar ingredients. Everything. Uh, what you eat, what you use, what you put on your lips, what deodorant. Just look at all that. And then just start, pay, look at that because typically a woman puts on over 140, uses a hundred, puts on over 16 or 16 to 22 products, but use in there, you are applying over 144 chemicals to your body. Mm. There's some crazy numbers out there. Men are a little bit less, but they also are using, uh, all these different products too, you know, shaving mm -hmm. cream that have these chemicals in them, fragrance. So these are potentially all these chemicals getting into your body every day, you know, and somebody might say, well, you know, it wouldn't be on the shelf if the FDA didn't approve it. And that is not necessarily true because some of the products are not even cleaning supplies, don't even have to go through the FDA, but what they will claim is the levels of the chemicals, let's say, are in shampoo, are okay for human consumption or okay for, but the problem is it that's just that's not all you're putting on your body or spraying, you know, cleaning your home with. The cumulative effect of all of these chemicals in our bodies, in their is kids' bodies, in any human beings' bodies, is is a huge concern mm -hmm. because they they will your toxic load your our bodies are wonderful and amazing how we can uh function and get rid of some of these chemicals but it only has it only can do so much right. and you you want to you want to keep your or you want to keep as many chemicals away from your organs as possible mm -hmm. you want your organs to function for what they really were made for not for 144 chemicals that are coming into your system every single day. Mm -hmm. And it's just being aware of that and what is out there that you are using and could potentially be outgassing into your home as well. So um, there, and you know what, there's down the line, there's also besides having an indoor air quality monitor, which I also have on my website too. Okay, um, It's actually in my, on my website and it's also in, uh, my Amazon store, but the the one I love that I have right here is called Yoohoo, U H O O. It's really cool because I love it because I can look at it on my phone at any given time what all the levels are. But there, it has gotten so advanced now that we can have our blood or our urine tested to see how many mm -hmm. chemicals are in our body. So when people come to me, it depends on how much people want to really learn and know. I wanted to know everything. 20 years ago, I did this. I'm like, okay, what chemicals are in my body? And I didn't have many, except I did have BPA. And BPA is something you do not want in your body. And that comes from plastic. And I was drinking coffee out of a plastic wow. coffee pot. And the water was brewing out of plastic, you know, all these plastics. So I got rid of that. And I don't have any more BPA and or detectable BPA in my system. So uh so those are you know there's all these advanced things we can do to uh help alleviate health issues by alleviating the amount of chemicals in our body i sometimes think people take better care of their cars than they mm -hmm. do for their bodies oh yeah for sure <laughs> you know and you know all it is is taking some of these tests that are out there that uh can be done to show you these levels and it's eye opening when you see that you have you know, benzene, formaldehyde, BPA in your body. It's like, where did it come from? And, you know, I love helping people figure that out. Okay. So, so that's how we could also work with you is help. And you do what you're, is that like a urine test that you're then? Uh, uh, ones, uh, typically they're urine tests. Yeah. Okay. And okay. I work with a company um, out of California right now called Million Marker. Okay. Uh, so yeah, there, there's, there's, places like that popping up all over the place too. Okay. Which is, is great. Unfortunately, well, at least in New York state, unfortunately, I can't go to my doctor and say, can you test right. my blood for, and I don't know why it's like that, but he said, yeah. no, New York state doesn't allow it. I'm like, oh. nope. 
something to do with the chemical companies not wanting us to know because mm-hmm. that would turn people i mean once that really gets on a roll of people figuring knowing if you know that you have all these chemicals in your body that are potentially cancer causing chemicals people don't know right um right. and they don't want us to know right they definitely don't want us to know yeah unfortunately but that's why we're here to help yes. people help yes. people realize yes that you can make a change and it's you and and you know what there's been uh, many studies reports people have done tests that that once they start removing these from their their homes and stop eating fruits and vegetables sprayed with pesticides all of your levels go down so we have seen these test results of families doing these tests of you know, some scientists doing them so that show that you can reduce them. So the idea is to avoid all of them and avoid all these illnesses that could potentially be caused from these horrible chemicals. Yeah. And not all chemicals are bad. I have to add that too. <laughs> but you want to avoid the bad ones. <laughs> right, right. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day for this. You are very welcome. You anytime I'm here for you and uh, okay. and read we'll your leave. labels and know your ingredients. Yep. And we'll leave everything in the show notes for all of you who are listening so that you know where to find her. And yeah, perfect. Perfect. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you so much. Yes, of you course. You are welcome. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to listen to our podcast. We hope you found this information valuable and can incorporate it into your family's life. Make sure to check out our show notes for all the important links available. Come join us on Facebook at Moms Raising Healthy Humans community page. Also, please check out our wide range of memberships, family monthly focus ideas, challenges, live events, and on-demand and live workouts, meal plans, and so much more. Head to formfitonline.com. And as always, keep moving. Keep moving.